It's a pleasure to have you here. The news is coming to you live from Akukumlimli Studios in Accra. We are also live on DSTV Channel 421 and GoTV Channel 144. The Tema Police Command is commencing a full-scale probe into the circumstances leading to the importation of 436 pistols and 50 pieces of ammunition into the country without the required permit. These were seized by officials of the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority at the Tema Port on Friday. The clearing agent of the items is currently said to be assistant with the probe. Joining me now with details of a statement issued by the Ghana Revenue Authority is editor here at Joe News, Fred Smith. Fred, first, tell us about the circumstances that led to the seizure of, of the goods. This uh, gives the GRA is giving details in this statement is issued uh, last night and it says that the container described on arrival at the Tamaport as containing personal effects, household goods and a carding machine was flagged as a red channel. After examination, they found 18 packages of uh, identified as restricted items and uh, these include 436 space pistols and these are side arms, 26 packs of 50 pieces of ammunition and one piece of pepper spray, about 40 mils. And it continues by saying that these items had been imported into the country without the necessary permits from the Ministry of Interior Venice. And the items had also not been declared to customs on arrival. Mm. It says that an inventory of the items were taken and that in the presence of officers of the preventive wing of the customs division of the Intelligence and Examination Office Bureau of National Investigations the national security and the police and all representatives including the clearing agent were present they all signed against the total number of arms and ammunition they had seized and a seizure notice was also issued to the clearing agent and the seized consignment was placed in the custody of the customs division uh, of the ghana revenue authority it says that the clearing agent is currently assisting the tama harbor police uh, command with the investigation meanwhile some division has provided the police with the necessary information that they need uh, to proceed with this investigation, Venice. Uh, we understand that some arrests have been made. We'll bring details of that in subsequent bulletins. But the GRA also has some concerns, in, in, and they raised those in the statement. Yes, indeed, they had some concerns. They said the uh, Ghana Revenue Authority finds it worrying, mischievous, and premature that any information that seeks to imply that the seized ammunition is being kept for onward release to quote some big men. The outcome of the investigation by the police, they say, uh, on these restricted items will be made public when it is concluded that the authority is using the opportunity to caution all importers and then on the importation of arms and ammunition can be carried out only with a permit by the Ministry of Interior, and these items must be declared on importation. Uh, it says that it is assuring the general public that the Customs Division will not relent on its regulatory duties at the nation's ports and other points of country to ensure that the country is safe at all times. Thank you very much. Join News Editor Fred Smith there was, with a statement released by the Ghana Revenue Authority on the seizure of some cash of ammunition. Now, let's move on to some other stories now. Family members of the MP for Takwansio, Mrekuduke, have fled the town of Dompem after several of them sustained severe machete wounds when they were attacked over the weekend. One person is said to be in critical condition following the violence. Mr. Duka has told Joe News a team of soldiers have been deployed to the town, but he's had to get his family out for their own safety and uh, the mp joins us on the line with more uh, thank you for joining us this morning first of all our sympathies to you and the members of your family uh, we understand uh, one person is in critical condition are you able to tell us uh, the state of that person now um uh, good morning to your parish to be west um he's doing well now i guess it is um uh, doctors have been uh, around him uh, throughout the night and Okay now. Okay. Um, do you have any reason to suspect this attack was for any reason apart from the known chieftaincy issue in the area? I'm asking this because we had indication from the police earlier that this has nothing to do with the chieftaincy conflict. Um, 
I'll be surprised if they do say so, but I don't okay. have uh, expect the expectation to determine otherwise. Okay. But uh, I wouldn't uh, say so. Practically, uh, it emanated out of the GKC mm. uh, issue. And uh, just uh, those who, were, who unleashed that mayhem on my family uh, belong to a fashion uh, okay. uh, feuding uh, GKC dispute. So uh, I wouldn't say uh, what the police is saying is made mm. right or wrong. Okay. We have the professional expertise to determine. Uh, so I wouldn't go into details uh, because I've handed over the matter to them mm. to professionally handle it mm. uh, expeditiously. So mm. that is all that uh, I want from them. I want the truth to be uh, uh, brought up. And okay. the perpetrators also brought to book. So it's not a matter of, you know, uh, predetermining uh, who did that. Okay. Uh, okay, but I just wanted to establish that the, 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 you don't have reason to suspect that this has to do with any other issue. Uh, I'm not ruling any possibility out. Okay. Uh, you've been visiting these uh, members of your family. Uh, just also help us understand, is it that the people attacked in this incident happen to be members of your family or there are other people who were attacked who are not members of your family? Uh, unfortunately, those that were attacked were all my family members. Um, one was just standing in front of my family house. Mm. Uh, we, I have, you know, I'm a royal, I have about three family houses. Okay. And we normally do funerals uh, in front of one of the family houses, and we, we call the place in Quantanan. So uh, one guy was just a, a small boy, was around holding a phone, and the attacks were misbehaving. And thinking that the small boy was recording them, he called for the small boy to bring his phone for them to glance to whether or not uh, he was recording. So the boy handed over the phone to them. They went through and then unfortunately uh, pulled out a knife on the small boy. So, how, how old is this boy, please? Um, about 10, between 10 to 13. Okay. So uh, one of my nephews just said, why are you doing this to this small boy? And that provoked them, and they pounced on him. That is the one critical condition. Mm. A lady was also, you know, just around and said, what you are doing is not fair. And they didn't also forgive her. So that's how it started. Okay. And uh, uh, we've asked the police, they've arrested uh, one of the guys who did that. Uh, his name is Dato. And is the police custody as I speak with you. But there, there are other four guys who have been mentioned and they need to be arrested immediately. Mm. And they, they are around and the police can really get them if they want to get them. And, and uh, I believe there are also those that they followed to the funeral ground must also be questioned. There are people who have been interested in that. Don't forget, uh, just recently, uh, my own palace uh, was also bent down by the same team. And we, we, we need, really need to up our game. Mm -hmm. so, uh, my, I had to, even at that time, uh, bring all my aunties and you know, my grandfathers, because they were, they were all living at the palace, I had to move all of them away from dumping to hide them in Tapa. And I don't think it's fair. Mm. So, uh, so I get a sense from what you're saying that this has been lingering. And it, it, it's all coming from the chieftaincy issue. But how is that issue being resolved? Uh, I was surprised that it didn't go to a tal level because uh, the matter is before high court. Okay. So why couldn't they even wait for the high court to determine and so on and use the process? Uh, uh, I, I, I just don't want to talk much about it because mm. the matter has been handed over to the police as I speak with you okay. and don't want to uh, you know, go into details of the matter. And, uh, at the appropriate time, mm. uh, probably go on all the things uh, okay. that if there are. 
Okay, but how are you doing? How, how are you keeping safe? Oh, I'm well. I'm well and speaking. I'm well and speaking. I'm doing well and safe. I'm well and uh, uh, will not be distracted from what we are supposed to do as a member of parliament. Uh, we determined and resolved to go all out and campaign. We will not be intimidated in any way. Mm. We will continue to uh, sell out our message and the good works of the president to our constituent and make sure uh, we need to represent our people. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Mirko Duka is MP for Takwa in Swayam, and he's just been explaining uh, what happened over this weekend uh, to members of his family. Uh, we wish them all the best and speedy recovery to the injured persons. But from one MP to the other, uh, this one who lost his life, the Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Kwe, is expected at the home of the late infantryman MP Echo Kwanza Hayford, uh, who was shot dead by highway rob robbers sometime last week. Ahead of that visit, though, Michael E. Kujonyako has been speaking to the police for the latest on their investigations and joins us live with more. Hello, uh, Richard. What are you able to tell us? Well, so uh, what I can tell you is that the police um, have visited the victims, the two that um, got injured in the process. They are recuperating at the special, Greenberg Specialist uh, hospital um, at Greenibam, and they said that they are responding to treatment. But in the family house of this late MP, um, people are asking what uh, government is doing about that particular stretch of the road because mm. this is not the first time an incident incident like that has happened. Looking at the fact that it is just the shortcuts to one of the highways, uh, the Kumasi uh, Yamrasa. Um, uh, to Kumasi Highway, mm -hmm. and people prefer using that place. But because the road is not tarred, it is undulating, it is not more trouble, people are unable to travel on that particular stretch during the night. And in the night as well, the road is not lit. There are no street lights on that particular stretch of road. In fact, uh, if you travel on that stretch, um, some 10 kilometers away from where the incident happened, is the Magazine Divisional Police Command. And then five meters away from where the incident happened is a barrier, police barrier. So um, they say that, well, if they are unable to do anything about that, then it means that they would continue recording incidents of that nature. Because last year, mm. a policeman got killed by robbers um, when they were exchanging um, uh, fire. Mm. And so they are asking governments to use the death of this MP to make sure that that road is constructed to, to I mean, in memory of the late mm. MP, and so that is what residents are saying. Uh, Richard, has the police been saying anything about suspects and arrests? Well, so they've not arrested any of them. They say that they are intensifying their efforts. They've, uh, they're on the lookout and they are asking the general public, especially um, residents around Mankesimu, Jumakon, Abradunkau, the Ajani communities, to be on the lookout for people that um, they suspect might be um, the suspect in this case. And so that is an appeal. They are making a passionate appeal to help the police volunteer information so that the police would also be closing in on these mm. suspects. Mm. And what's the general mood in the town? Uh, on, on the day of the incident, uh, there was a lot of anger we heard from people who had thronged uh, the hospital over the incident. What? The, the, the anger has subsided a bit because um, it's taking them about three, four days for them to ponder over whatever has happened. But it's left a lot of people still talking in the town of Mankesim. People still cannot understand why that incident had to happen in the first place. And so that is why they are calling on government to do something to ensure that whatever it would take to ensure that justice is served, uh, the slain MP government should do that if it means that uh, they would engage more police personnel or bring more uh, more of the teams to join those who are already on the ground to ensure that whatever really happened, that mystery would be unraveled. Thank you very much, Richard Kojunyako is a central region correspondent. He's still liaising with the police, so uh, whenever he gets any update, he sure will share with us. Uh, but. Let's head to Parliament now. Our parliamentary correspondent, Joseph Opukugapo, uh, has joined us with details on the visit of the Speaker of Parliament to the bereaved family later today. Uh, Joseph, tell us uh, more about the Speaker's visit. 
And so, Venice, this is expected to come off sometime around 2 o'clock, that um, a little later today, sometime around 1 o'clock, uh, the Speaker, Professor Michael Quay, as well as the leadership of Parliament on both the majority and the minority side, as well as the Deputy Speakers, will head off to the Family House. Essentially, mm -hmm. the idea is to commiserate to the Family first of all, and um, you know that the Parliament of Ghana has been taking the necessary steps, not only to ensure the security of more of the rest of the MPs, but also to pile some form of pressure mm. on the police to get mm. to the bottom of this. So we are expecting that beyond communicating with the family, that assurance will be coming from the third most powerful gentleman of the land to the family, mm. that the necessary pressure will be piled on the police in order for them to get to the bottom of this and bring the perpetrators to book. So uh, we're counting down to that particular visit by mm. Professor Michael Quay and the leaders for parliament to the family a little later this afternoon. Joseph, it's good you mentioned the issue about uh, the safety of parliamentarians because they were discussing that on the floor last week. Precisely. Uh, it's been a repeated conversation, not just um, on the floor of the house, but even when you have conversations. You know, over the weekend, a lot of work has been ongoing to even get um, MPs to show up on our shows for conversations which are planned for the evenings. And everyone keeps referencing the fact that, you know, these are dangerous and difficult times and uh, really MPs are being a lot more careful with their security. And so um, it's been a general thing that has come up initially when the set attack on Mr. Duca came up, everyone said it was somehow linked. But now we're getting the sense that it's somehow a chief sensor related. But the, the point that MPs on the floor, outside the floor, are generally making, which again was repeated by the speaker, uh, is that there's the need not only for increased security presence across the country and the need to boost security generally across the country, but they describe themselves as politically exposed people who deserve a lot more protection mm. beyond what ordinary citizens actually get. And we're expecting that tomorrow morning from 10 o'clock, the Interior Minister, Ambrose Berry, will be on the floor of Parliament as MPs quiz him on what is being done to ensure educate security across the country, first of all, what is being done to ensure security for members of Parliament, and then additionally, what is being done to get to the bottom of this particular issue with the killing of Echo Hayford. Thank you very much. Joseph Apukugapo is our parliamentary correspondent, uh, giving us details of the conversations on the floor uh, about MP security and the visit of the Speaker of Parliament to the home of uh, the MP who was killed by highway robbers later today. Away from that, this weekend's flood has reduced a section of the Accra-bound stretch of the accra Cape Coast Highway from three lanes to one, as about 300 meters of the road is covered with eroded laterite washed down from the Aplaku Hills. Aside from vehicles getting stuck in the mud, uh, there's also damage that has been caused to the section of that stretch. Maxwell Agbaba is live there and joins us now. Hello, Maxwell. <laughs> I'm sure that drivers and commuters on that road are very upset. Bring us up to speed with what's happening now. Hello, Maxwell. Exactly, um, Ben as well. So as you can rightly see, this is the um, Accra bound. This is the Accra bound stretch. Um, so this stretch leads to Accra and is the main um, Accra Cape Coast um, highway. As you can see, um, all of these vehicles are actually struggling um, to use just one lane of, of this stretch, which is um, more trouble at this point. A huge, I mean, a chunk of the road itself has been covered, you know, with laterite, and that is as a result of the weekend's um, rains. It has also damaged the section of the road, and you can see it is very bumpy, so when the vehicles get there, they would have to take their time to use it. Now, this stretch is not, this is, this is not what this stretch, I mean, was like previously. It was because, um, it has become so because um, of the rains. And uh, we've been standing here for the past one hour, and we've actually seen some vehicles, you know, stuck um, in this mud. And it has caused some kind of traffic situation for people um, who are going to the central business district, Accra, and its, you know, um, environs. Because when they get to this part, they would have to take their time, you know, to use it. And the three lane stretch reduced um, to just um, one. I have some of the residents and motorists here who are very upset about the situation. They say anytime it rains, they have to endure, you know, this um, here. 
Sir, you welcome to join us. Yes, um, my name is William. Um, I've lived here for a couple of um, yeah. um, years. Um, the problem is that um, I believe that the West is more. Um, there's a lot of rain coming from the upper part of the landscape. And if you look at, if you look at this place, um, for the past 10, 15 years, this problem wasn't there. So because the, there has been an increase in population in this area, the water coming from the upper part of the landscape is, comes to, on the main road and then it gets over flooded. And when it gets over flooded, it doesn't have any place to go. Then where does it go? So it comes to all over and go to people's houses. This is the bank and this is another big company here called Atala. They, all these people have come together, they've, they've tried a lot to talk to the, the MP, but they are not doing anything about it. This is very severe and it's critical. Now, the road is, is not, um, uh, uh, you, you can't use the road anymore because the, the, there's a lot of sand coming from the upper part of the road, which, and it, which is disturbing the, the people in the community. And I believe that this is an inter intercontinental road, which we need to do something about it. So we believe that the, the DCE and the MP, and we are appealing to Danado. This is election year. If he doesn't do anything about it, we are going to block the road and make sure that this thing is solved before election time. Mm. We are serious and we are not joking at all. Mm. This is what we are saying. Mm. That's it. And wait, this, this happens after every rain? Anytime it rains, just for even for, tech, for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, it fl gets flooded all over. And this place becomes not plowable. You, can, you cannot use the road at all. And it becomes a big problem. You cannot do business along the road. And, and it's, it's unfortunate. This, the ministers are all aware about it because they have been plowing the road all the time. And we've been talking about it all the time, but they don't do anything about it. So we are, we are appealing to Donato straight from him. The MP, the DC, if he doesn't do anything about it, what we're going to do is that we'll block the road and we'll make sure that nobody reaches the road again. And this is very serious. We'll make sure that we do that, do that safely so that this place will be more trouble. Right. Okay. Let me speak to another man who lives here um, in this um, community who has also witnessed it. Aside from, you know, the flooding in your homes, I'm sure as a citizen of this country, you are equally concerned about how damaged, um, you know, this road is at this point, because a lot of money spent to construct this. Uh, permit me to speak my lo in the local dialect. First name road. Malam Junction, Kesepan on where I was so moving to two. The free has say one of the West Moose, uh, West uh, Hills more no. It's only in Afaha. And then you free a year friend say red top no. Nini na Baha say so. And a covert is a fifteen years in so. And a bar and your baby in court. No, you are for Hanum. I might feel any na I say yeah, a basura way. I, I condemn. Okay. Say man, to I okay. condemn. If you back, be so. I condemn. I no I condemn. So, it is one more no maybe. There be a it's sort of one more one more no more far no more here no more call no more. One more unconcerned. Okay. So, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So you just said um, from. From, from, from the man he lives here and is equally concerned about the situation, talking about a flooding situation, you know, um, on the stretch. Um, there's another gentleman who works here who wants to talk to us. Um, yes. Sir, you're welcome to join us. Yes, please, I can speak Ga so that you can hear me all. Oh, oh, you are speaking good English, so let's speak English. Oh, let, 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 let me speak the Ga so that uh, okay, the others can hear. Yeah. Can you position yourself here? Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, no, start a cable on your neighbor. The neighbor fake by name, and you can share can be a fake do flower can you be a name? What can you want to know? And watch she a cabbage by me. Can you know who I did? Can you know more now? Fair demo more hill and affair demo. Can you know as a fair cut the red top to my bed rock factory fair demo by fair? But no affair got a better man. Be a name on the new caba. And what one quack of matter fight? No, no, if you are well, I can learn to know to my papa. She knew who a Bawana, as I need that draw he, then I can in a few, Lawaba Quo. If it won't be a shammy, what changing can one be fair, love and Kaya, Toletti can be fair by Wabano, a Wakwe, a Wakaliaka one district and a town they can feel Laba Fiawa, Kadena Kawa vote to wake up here. Okay. Well, essentially, uh, what he's saying in Ghana uh, is that he's saying they've, they've, they've appealed to the authorities to 
fix the situation here, but it looks like they're not really doing much um, to, to, to resolve, you know, um, the situation here. So he's saying that if they do not, um, if they don't make sure that it fixed this problem, they shouldn't come here because they are not going to vote. So Ben is basically, um, this is it, the pedestrian, you know, walkway here, completely covered in large rights. You cannot, you cannot even walk on this stretch. I mean, for people who want to walk on the side of the road, they cannot. Even for vehicles, you know, using um, the routes, like I already mentioned, the three lane has been reduced to two and then one at a section, um, causing some kind of traffic situation here. The road has been damaged and has become bumpy now. If you do not take your time, you get stuck on this um, highway. That's the situation here, Benes. Thank you very much, Maxwell Agbagba, uh, reporting live from one community to the other. Well, in Yara, the chiefs and people of that community, which is a farming community in the Kintampo North Municipality of the Bunu East Region, have vowed to chase out EC officials who would be in the community on December 7 for the conduct of the presidential and parliamentary elections. The road connecting Yara to its district capital is in a deplorable state. Residents are unhappy that successive governments continue to neglect them after securing their votes. Correspondent Anasa Bit was there, and here's his report. Residents of Yara, a community under the Kintampo North Municipality of the Bono East Region, have sent a strong signal to politicians ahead of the 2020 general elections. The people feel neglected by successive governments as the road network linking the community to its district capital is in a terrible state. Speaking at the community's Yam Festival, Chief of Yara, Nana Yao Joseph, reiterated how politicians continuously neglect the people even though they do visit to campaign each electionary season. We've been neglected over the years. If you take a look at our roots, it seems we are not part of the country. We vote every election. We know how to get here when they need our votes. We give several promises, but we never He stated that the people are tired of empty promises and as a result, will send away EC officials who will be sent to the community on December 7. No one should come here to campaign this year. In fact, we shall destroy ballot materials that will be brought here. Nana Yarahini stated that the construction of the road network before the elections is the only thing that will convince the people to vote. If you are not part of the country, no one should stop here to campaign. We will show you that we are also here. We are not voting until we see machines Kra Emmanuel is the headmaster of the Yara RC Basic School. He tells Joy News that successive governments have neglected the educational institutions in the Yara community. Our chief has just spoken and he was very annoyed and it is really true for him to be annoyed. When you come through the community, you will see that there is nothing that has been done by government to this community. The past government and this current government, they are saying that they have given some schools uh, laptops and uh, this and desktops and whatnot for ITT. And here is the case, we are also part of Ghana and we have not seen any of these things in our community. On his part, 
Assembly member for the Yara Electoral Area, Honorable Asilo Kwasi Emmanuel, appealed for the construction of a modern computer laboratory to aid ICT in the area. We are appealing to government to come to our aid and then assist us in a modern computer lab. If I my school in Kintan North Municipality is the School, whenever we say that, we always come first in the municipality. So we are appealing to government uh, to, come to, to, aid, to come in our aid for a modern computer lab. Reporting for Joy News, Anas Sabit, Yara. Alasimo Emmanuel, Assembly Member for the Yara Electoral Area, has joined the program. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Now, your people are concerned. Governments come, make promises, and when they win, they don't see them again. How do you respond to those claims? Okay, good morning to your listeners. Yeah, that is true. Anytime it is an election time like this, they will come to our place, keep on promising us. Last four years, His Excellency Nanado Danko Akufuado came to Busema and promised us that when we give him power, he will construct our road for us. Mm. After we voted for him, that we didn't hear anything about it again. So that made us to raise a concern that he promised us uh, to construct our road for us. So that's why the chief is annoyed like that. Oh, okay. So this year we've seen uh, the, the, the president was in the Bono East region some, some time ago. Did he visit your community? Has any politician been there recently? No, recently I didn't visit um, Busema and Yara. I didn't visit there. Okay, you are a member of the assembly. It's been four years. Why are you waiting till now to make your concerns known? Yeah, we wrote um, a letter to the MC regional minister and then his excellency in Anandu Danko Akufado office that we are remembering him for the promise he made to us that you can our road. Mm. Then we have not heard any trend about it. Okay, if you can remember, when exactly did you write these letters? When did you raise your concerns? Yeah, we raised the concern last year. Last and this year to raise it. Okay. Has the MP for the area ever been to Yara? Yes, several times. Okay, and what does he tell you? Yeah, we keep on telling him that we want our road to be quiet. He said it is in Parliament, they will approve it. But still now we haven't heard anything about it. Okay, we, we know that MPs are not supposed to fix roads, but usually there's a lot of lobbying then. But the MC, the local assembly too, what are they saying? You are an yeah, assembly we member. Move, we need mm. more assembly members. The MC, um, isn't last year, he constructed his more but it didn't reach far place okay it was he, he just graded it mm. no gravel if he, the road was constructed in rollins regime okay. and president rollins was the president okay so after that they keep on gradering it so due to that all the gravels on the surface of the road mm. It's no more. Okay. So it that the road is very slippery. Okay. Well, we were hoping to reach the MC, but uh, we, we are unable to do that for now. Uh, but thank you for your time. Emmanuel Asimo is Assembly Member of Yara, and the chief there has threatened to throw out EC officials if they show up for this year's elections because their community has not been developed as promised by politicians during campaign times in the past. But let's stay a while on election-related uh, matters. Uh, the president is touring the Upper West Region and has cut sword for the construction of a 275-meter-long bridge across the Black Volta. The project pegged at 26,458,521 cities will be undertaken by Greenau Engineering Limited. The president cut the sword uh, as part of his tour. Joining us, Rafiq Salam reports from Dikpe in the Laura municipality. There are about 183 communities that are lying close to the Black Volta who divides Ghana and its northern neighbor Burkina Faso. Despite the symbiotic and blood relationship that exists between residents of the communities, they were separated by the colonialists and has remained till today. The Black Volta therefore serves as a divide between the two countries. 
several Ghanaian governments in the past have on their agenda to construct a bridge over the Black Volta to ease their traveling burden, which is mostly done using canoes, but none has been able to fulfill that dream. So when President Ikufo Ado at the 2017 Kobine Festival of the Chiefs and People of the Lower Traditional Area made a pledge on the construction of the 275-meter bridge at Dikpe, many thought it was going to be added to what is referred to here as a list of unfulfilled chain of Kobine promises. However, President Ikufo Ado had other ideas. He finally cut the sword for work to begin on the project after bilateral discussions with officials from Burkina Faso. It will be completed in 24 months. The project consists of the following components. One, construction of a 275 meter long bridge. Two, construction of 12 kilometers of Laurel Town Roads and bypass. Three, construction of a rest stop consisting of a lorry park, a mini market, and facilities for the police service, immigration service, and the customs division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Four, construction of a toll plaza. And fifthly, construction of an axle load way station. Deputy Minister of Roads and Highways, Anthony Abeyifa Kabo, was visibly excited about the project, stating that it is a dream come true. The wish of the late Abel Fakabo, one of the pillars of our tradition, was to see this bridge completed. And I'm happy that one of his own from the tradition, the last chip of the old block, is fulfilling this destiny, is fulfilling this prophecy under your leadership. I am most grateful, Mr. President, for all that you have done for my people. And I believe that on the 7th December, Mr. President, in the 2016 election, you did not win in Laura. But you have been to Laura five times. Our own brother, John Mahama, came here some weeks back. It was a sad occurrence. As President of the Republic, he never visited us. We invited him for cabinet, he never showed up. We invited him for many events, he never showed up. It is your government, it is you, Mr. President, who have listened to the people, you have attended our festival, you have engaged with us, and you have given us monumental development. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam, Dikpe. And the vice president has begun campaigning in areas where members of the NPP have broken ranks to contest as independent candidates in the Ashanti region. There's more in this report. <laughs> Regional chairman of the NPP, Bernard Enchubu Siako, is championing the agenda to win all seats in the region for the party. He explains efforts to make Akwesi Amufajiman recent decision to contest Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Joseph Oseus, for the Bekwai seat in both NPP primaries and as independent candidates. I brought the former IGP, Patrick Echampo, to speak to him to reconsider his decision, but he refused. I brought pastors, chiefs, and former Ashanti regional chairman, Yamamankwa, to speak to him, but he didn't listen. I made the president call him, but he never honored his invitation. Interestingly, Bekwai constituency voted incumbent MP Joseph Oseusu to parliament as independent candidate. The story of Ashanti Regional Minister Simon Osei-Mensah and how he lost Musumchi seat to Deputy Education Minister osei Yao Edukum is the party's example for members going independent. The pain I felt after being defeated didn't make me contest as independent candidate. I worked with him for the party. I wouldn't have been a regional minister if I had put my interest first. Yes. 
at Fomina, incumbent MP Andrew Amankwa Esiama is contesting the seat as independent after failure to contest primaries due to what he says is unfair treatment by constituency party executives. Not just politicians, but traditional authority are unhappy with his candidature. Nanakwesi Anna Wood II is linguist for the Fomina Traditional Authority. We wanted him to reconsider his decision to contest as independent, but we learn he has fought his nomination, and we are not happy with that. Meanwhile, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia introduced the Fomina candidate, Philip Ofori Asante, to the traditional authority. This is our parliamentary candidate for the constituency. We don't support independent candidates. I know him personally as a banker when I worked with the Bank of Ghana. He's a credible candidate. For Joy News. You're watching News Desk with me, Bernice Abubedulansa. Coming up shortly in business, government to add new debt of 2.5 billion CDs to its existing loan in quarter four of this year. Dow Kwa is standing by for details to stay. Hi, good morning. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Government will add new debt of 2.5 billion cities to its existing loan in quarter four of this year. Charles Nixon Yaboa has more on the issuance calendar. In December alone, 11.3 billion cities will be raised through both short and long term financial instruments. According to the issuance calendar, 19.6 billion cities will, however, be used to roll over maturing loans. Government in September had planned to borrow 22.7 billion cities between September and November, with 3.05 billion cities as fresh issuance. Out of the total amount to be raised in the last quarter, 9.7 billion cities, which is the highest amount, will be issued through a 91-day treasury bill. The lowest amount to be raised is 287 million cities, which will be issued via a 20-year bond. The 20-year bond was originally scheduled to be issued in November, but had to be pushed to December because of the current market conditions. According to the issuance calendar, the 91-day and 182-day treasury bills will be issued every week, whilst the one-year treasury note will be floated every fortnight. The World Bank, in its latest African Pulse report, projected a significant rise in the country's total public debt for this year. According to the Britain Wood Institution, this is due to the widening fiscal deficit as a result of lower revenue and higher expenditure brought about by COVID-19. The country's debt hit 263 billion cities in July, about 68.3% of gross domestic product. Generally, government debt as a percentage of GDP is used by investors to measure a country's ability to make future payments on its debt. Now, the Food and Drugs Authority says it will leverage the level three status it attained from the World Health Organization to ensure that at least 99% of all regulated food supplements and drugs in the country meet acceptable standards. The level three status is the second highest in the 40th WHO classification. Acting Head of Monitoring and Evaluation at the FDA, Joseph Benny, spoke to Joy Business at the maiden edition of the Ghana Premier Business and Finance Excellence Awards, where his outfit received a special gold award for its sterling performance. Bismarck Ausa has more. The FDA's level three regulatory status attained makes Ghana one of only two countries in Africa and the 52nd in the world to attain the high profile rank. Speaking to Joy Business, the acting head of monitoring and evaluation at the FDA, Joseph Bini, says the authority is working to ensure that almost all foods and drugs on the market are wholesome by 2023. There are a lot of court cases now that have been uh, prosecuted the police, like I said, the Attorney General's Department helping us to do the prosecution. And then we, as an institution, also applying the administrative charges to ensure that people fall in line with what the law demands. Going forward, we, we want to assure Ghanaians that there will be a time when you walk into any facility, you are most likely to find out that about 99% of the goods that are regulated 
have been really regulated and you can safely walk out and ensure that whatever you purchase is regulated. The Ghana Premier Business and Finance Excellence Awards was instituted to honor business and finance houses which have made outstanding contributions to the economic development of the country. The Minister of Business Development, in a keynote address read on his behalf, made a strong case for more private sector contribution to the economy. If you look at the Asian miracle that has become, or that took the world by storm, it was done in consultation or in collaboration, in cooperation with the private sector. As I alluded in my introductory remarks, no nation can do it without the private sector. But any government that decides to neglect you will do that at his own peril. Other award winners include Goldfields Ghana Limited, Stambic Bank, Zipay Ghana Limited, and the Bank of Ghana. The event was themed promoting Ghana's economic development. <laughs> And that's all in business this more after this week.